Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. First off, I just want to say thank you so much for the love on the bathroom makeover. That video just went up and it was so much fun for me to do. You guys seem to really love the makeover, so if you did miss it, be sure to go back and watch it after this one. As you can already tell, we are in the bedroom today and we made this space over three months ago. I honestly can't believe it was that long ago because it feels like I just made this over last week. As a quick recap, we added this beautiful shiplap and painted it a nice moody color and it just turned out better than I could have imagined. But I feel like it's missing a couple of things, so today we're going to DIY some projects that are inspired by things that I've seen online. I think these items are really going to complete the room and before we get into it, I want to thank Marlo for sponsoring today's video. I'll talk a little bit more about them later, but for now I'm going to show you the room and what plans I have for it. All right, so here we are in the bedroom. Not much has really changed, but one thing that I did not do in the initial makeover that I really want to do this time around is to add a piece of art right above the bed. So I have an idea for that and I think it's really going to draw your eye upwards. When I first did this makeover, I was just so excited about the shiplap that I just didn't want to cover it. But now that we lived with it for a while, I do think something is missing up there. So that is going to be a fun project. And panning around this way, a lot of you said to mount the TV. And I agree, this should be mounted. We actually did not plan to put a TV in here at all, but lo and behold, we have a TV in here and I actually do really like having one in here. Lifting it up onto the wall is gonna give us an opportunity to actually style this console, which I think deserves its own moment. So that is something we're going to tackle today and I also wanna build my own DIY frame for this TV. No, this is not a frame TV, but with some DIY magic, we're going to be able to achieve the same look and make this look like a beautiful gallery art moment. So that is happening today. Also, you might notice that a plant is missing here as well as over here because this room really does not get a lot of light. So sadly, the plants that I've had in here were starting to die, so I just moved them out. And instead, I want to DIY a faux plant to put right here. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube and Instagram on how to do this, and I also have a bunch of dead branches, so I thought, why not DIY it ourselves? So that is the plan. I'm gonna get started by measuring out my TV and figuring out everything that we need to do to make the frame. So I grabbed some trim over, oh my God, did I just make a hole? So I grabbed this trim and I like that it wasn't too thick and has a little bit of detailing here. So I think that's gonna look really nice. And basically what we're gonna do is to cut mitered edges on here and then create a frame to go around the TV. So as you saw, I just took the measurements of my TV and we're going to use that as the bottom measurement for the inside of the frame. I started off with cutting my 45 degree angles and I always err on the side of just cutting it a little too long first. And honestly, it's just the best way that I can get an accurate cut because if you cut off too much, it'll just be wasting a lot of material. So always cut a little bit more and then you can cut off more later. And we're just going to cut out four of these to build out the frame. I am so excited to finally get the TV mounted when we have guests over and even you guys in the comments have said how much better it will look if it's mounted and I 100% agree. I didn't do it when we first made over the room because I was just too afraid to. I don't know why certain projects scare me, but today we are going to face that fear and get the TV up on the wall. And of course, I couldn't just mount the TV. We also had to create a beautiful frame to make this look like a piece of art. So I'm loving all the details on this trim and and once it's all cut out, I'm just going to glue the pieces together. The trim that I'm using is actually plastic, so I use a Loctite glue, and then I also use a corner clamp to keep it in place. And once you get a nice 90 degree angle, you just wanna brad nail the corners and just hold everything together. For some extra reinforcement, I actually screwed in these corner braces and I made sure that I use teeny tiny little screws so that they won't pop out through the front. Immediately after putting them on, I could feel that structurally they were stronger, so I really would recommend doing this extra step. After the front of the frame was done, I just added in spackle and then caulked all the seams to make it look more seamless. From there, I cut some wood pieces for the outside perimeter. This is going to cover the sides of the TV and it's totally optional, but I think it's going to make a difference, especially if your TV is in an area where you just see it in all angles. You wanna cut out four of these and you just wanna measure the outside of the frame to get the exact measurements. I'm gonna line that right up against the edge and we're gonna brad nail it to the sides going right into the trim. 
I actually have been feeling a lot more confident in doing these mitered boxes, especially since I've been putting a lot of trim on my walls as well as framing out my own canvas. It's pretty much the same process, so if you want more details on it, I will link that video down below for you guys. Oh my god! I can't believe we built this. It looks so good. I don't think I could fit it in the camera, but I am loving how it's turning out, so it's time to give it some color, and I want to go with a gold color. I did a couple of samples here. Up here is actually a rub and buff, and I really love the finish of it, but I think I'm gonna go with this color right here, which is a spray paint. I just love this tone of gold, so that is what we're going for. So I'm gonna bring it to the garage, give it two quick coats, and then also one top coat. So while we're in the bedroom, I wanted to show you guys my new Marlo pillows, which are right behind me. They are a new favorite and I absolutely love them. We've been sleeping on them for a couple of weeks now and they are seriously so comfortable. So I'm excited to share them with you. And Marlo is actually a pillow brand that's made by Brooklinen, which I'm sure is a brand that you guys all know and love. And after years of doing sleep research, they decided to design their own pillows. So the Marlo pillows are designed to give you a better sleep. So here it is. This is honestly the most comfortable and softest pillow pillow that I've ever owned. Both Brian and I really love these and he's actually the type to like be able to sleep on the floor and be okay with that. But after our first night sleeping on these, he said he will not go back. We have been loving these and I honestly feel like I'm sleeping in a nice hotel room, which is always the goal when it comes to my bedroom. I am actually really picky when it comes to pillows and what's amazing is that you can actually adjust these with just the zipper over here. They're on the top and the bottom here and if you want a firmer pillow, all you have to do is just to zip it up. And this is super easy to do. So this is the more firm version, but I like to keep it unzipped because I want a nice big fluffy pillow so I love that you can adjust this. I think this is so genius and I love that you're able to customize it. And these are also really comfortable because they're made with a cooling infused memory foam. So I don't feel hot throughout the night. I really cannot recommend these enough. And if you wanna try them for yourself, they're actually giving you guys 25% off for two of these pillows or if you buy four of them, you'll actually get 40% off, which is huge. If you're in the market for new pillows, definitely check them out. I'll have all that info down below. Do we have to unplug it? See. Obviously. <laughs> nah, I think we should just leave it. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. You what? No. <gasps> oh my god! Ah. Why are you using your head? It just fell on it. I picked out a TV mount that claimed to be really easy to install and it also works on walls without studs. Plus it's really slim because it's basically like a French cleat which is perfect for our new frame. So we just screwed one of the pieces into the back of the TV and then we figured out exactly where we wanted it on the wall. We actually have plaster walls, so I wasn't too sure about what kind of mount would actually work. So this was a great option for us. All we had to do was to screw the mount into the wall and then hammer in the nails. They're missing the nails. Wait. What do you mean? Oh no. It says all the hardware is supposed to be in here. Okay, so now that we got the new nails, we're just going to hammer those in. I really can't believe that someone took the nails and also the screws out, but it's never a surprise that I have to make multiple trips to the hardware store for any project. That definitely comes with the territory, especially if you're a serial DIYer like I am. In the end, we were able to get it up and it was looking so good. And now it's time to finally finish the frame. Here goes nothing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is it good? Wow, that looks so good. We're almost done. The last thing we need to do is to create a new lip. So I'm gonna create some little spacers here so that the TV will hang under here and not on the top here. That way everything is framed out perfectly. I cut out these little blocks and we're basically just gonna put it right underneath here and then brand nail it in. Is this even 
of my TV. Now that I know it fits for sure, I'm going to take off the little sticky part of the Velcro. So, oh my God, I'm gonna hit the TV. So you see right here, I have a Velcro strip, which is going to stick onto the top of the TV and that will hold it in place. For this next project, I need to go outside and find some dead branches and luckily we have a big pile of those so hopefully I find one that works well. So let's set outside and see what we find. Ah, oh, this door is still stuck. The branch is acquired. This is probably like 10 feet, so I'm gonna cut it down first. And then I also notice a lot of this bark is already coming off and I like that this is a smooth texture underneath. So I'm going to just carefully take it off. I'll mostly just do it on this long part and then leave this because you can't really see it anyways. It's gonna get covered with leaves. But yeah, I'm gonna cut this down so then we can actually fit it in our bedroom. Doing this project made me realize that I do not own a handsaw at the moment, so you definitely don't need a power saw to cut a branch, but that's all I had, so I did what I had to do. And I wanted to get this down to about six and a half feet so that I could easily prop it up or down in a pot. The bark on this branch was just so gray, so this is a great way to pull in more warm tones and also get a smoother looking tree. I found that my wood chisel worked perfectly, especially for the pieces of bark that didn't come off as easily. Plus, it was extra satisfying to strip the bark off, like this was probably my favorite part of the project. It also got me to thinking about other wood projects that I could do with all the branches and the logs that I have in my backyard. So if you guys have any fun ideas of what projects I can make with all the wood, please send them in the comments below. Now that our branch is at the perfect height, we want to make sure that it will stand upright. So I'm going to mix in some cement into a small plastic pot. And there are no exact measurements to this, so I'm just pouring in water and just eyeballing it until I get a pancake-like consistency. Once that's all mixed up, I'm placing the bottom of the branch right into the center and then I'm going to let it set for a couple of hours. The tree is already looking so cute, but we are going to make this look like a real tree with some leaves. So I have a bunch of these faux olive branches. You can use whatever leaves you want to create whatever tree you want, but I just love the look of these leaves. So that's what I'm going with. I actually have only watched reels on how to make this, but it looks like people use hot glue guns as well as their drill to kind of poke holes in the branches. And it's one of those projects that you kind of just figure out as you go and just fill it up. But the first thing I want to do is actually to cover this little branch right here. You can see that it kind of just stops at a blunt edge right here, so I want to cover that as much as possible with the leaves. I'm going to start by drilling a hole right here and then inserting one of the branches in. So you want to find a drill bit that's about the same size as your stem and then drill it along the larger parts of the branch. And then with the stem, I'm using wire cutters just to cut it down to size and also to remove some of the plastic on the outside so that you only see the wire. Then with a little hot glue in the hole, you just wanna place your stem in there and then hold it down until it cools. Otherwise it's gonna start flopping around. So we'll make sure you hold it down. And there we have our first branch. This is a project that anyone can do. And honestly, I think it'll look amazing no matter what kind of leaves that you use. If you find that you need to hide any areas that look kind of abrupt in between the branch and the stem, you could just add a leaf to cover it up. So I use this trick a lot when I was doing this. There's definitely no right or wrong way to do this. This project is kind of a work as you go and kind of just figure it out. But I did start with the two bigger branches and then just worked out from there. Wherever I felt the tree could use another branch, I just added one and you can make this as full or as sparse as you want it to be. I also found that it was best to spread the stems in every direction so that it looks more realistic and also adds movement to the tree. I made sure that none of the stems were just standing straight upright, otherwise it doesn't really look realistic. And every once in a while, I would just take a step back, look at the tree, and then see if there was any little missing areas that I could fill up. Trees in the home are definitely huge right now. I'm definitely on board with this trend, but let me know what you guys think of this trend below and whether you plan to buy a real or a fake tree for the house, it can get really costly. A small four foot olive tree could run you $90 and I've also seen some seven foot ones online for $400. So DIYing is definitely the most cost effective way to make yourself one in whatever size you want. Plus it just looks so much more realistic because you used a real branch. God, this is looking so good. 
All right, so it's time to make some artwork for above the bed. And since we already have a TV frame on the opposite wall, I wanted to do something a little bit different than just framed art. So we're going to create some dimensional art. And I was very much inspired by this piece right here that I saw from West Elm. It is originally $300, but you guys know that I always love a good challenge and I always want to make something custom that's unique to me. So I did draft up my own version. This looks kind of hard to see because it is basically black on black. But if you look closely, you can see all the different layers and shapes and I'm so excited for this project and I also want to give it some texture so I'll show you guys how I do that. So first I'm going to sketch out all of these and you can see all the different shapes right here. So I have a nice guideline for this and then with my jigsaw I'm going to cut all of these pieces out. While sketching out the shapes, I did keep in mind the scale of each one. So my goal was to create a piece that was about three feet. So I used a ruler to rough out some of the larger shapes. And a trick that I always use is actually to use the straight edge of the wood that's already there and use that as one of the edges. That way you don't have to cut that out. But also keep in mind that these shapes do not have to be perfect because we really want an abstract organic look. If you're working with a lot of curves like I am for this project, you definitely want to use a scroll blade on your jigsaw. This has a lot more teeth and will also give you a smoother, more precise cut. And I have to say, I've really grown to love my jigsaw because of how versatile it is and how I'm able to create any shape that I want. And this project for me was just so fun because I love when I'm able to mix together creating art with woodworking and this project is just that. Ran out of scroll blades, but I could use one of these, I suppose. How many issues have you encountered during this DIY? A lot. So this is how you replace a blade. Open it, pop it in, lock it, and then give it a little wiggle. With the battery out, of course. Okay, since I had to improvise with a regular wood blade halfway through, I was still able to cut the rest of everything out. I just had to go a little bit slower, and then when we get to the sanding step, that is going to help perfect the shape as well. Once everything was cut out and sanded, I went ahead and placed everything together just to get a general layout, and I also took a picture so that I could reference it later. I have them all laid out here, and to add some texture to them, I'm using this wall texture spray. I really love how you can adjust it so you could do a lot of texture or just a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna give that one coat around the whole thing and then let it dry. Before I gave this a second coat of spray paint, I went ahead and just assembled it all together since I'm going to be making holes in this and the spray paint is going to cover those later. And I started by creating some of these little standoffs with some scrap wood. I just cut them into small pieces and this is gonna help lift some of the shapes to make them stand out more and just overall make it look more three-dimensional. To attach those, I added wood glue to the back and then I'm going to brad nail it to the pieces underneath and I found that it was just best to start in the middle to make sure that all those pieces were together and then I worked my way outwards. After I was nailing things in, I did notice that the paint was coming off during the step. I think it may be because the texture spray or the spray paint wasn't fully dry because it was super humid out. Plus, I'm very impatient when it comes to dry time because I just want to move on to the next step. But that is a-okay because we're going to give this another coat of paint anyways. So do not mind those chips at all. This is one of those projects that I haven't seen a tutorial of before and I definitely was figuring it out as I went. And I'm so glad that I just did it and it was worth because this was turning out really well and it looked even better than I thought it could. So if you have a project that you've always wanted to DIY and don't know how to, I would say just go for it. You'll figure it out and learn some new skills along the way and it'll be totally worth it. Now that everything is glued and nailed in place, you should be able to pick it up as one piece. So everything is nice and sturdy and I went ahead and just gave it another coat of spray paint just to cover off the standoffs, holes, and any of the chipped paint. On the back side, I added these sawtooth picture hangers so that we could put it up. And to ensure that I created no damage to my shiplap, I actually placed the nails in between each of the boards. That way you can't even see them. And if I ever take them out, you will not notice. 
Now that everything is in place, I'm just going to style up the room a little bit and then reveal to you guys our finished projects. guys, I cannot believe how well this turned out. The room actually feels larger and taller, which is definitely a plus because my bedroom is a little bit on the smaller side. So I love how everything turned out. The room really does feel complete and I hope these projects gave you some good ideas. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and which project was your favorite. And if you recreate any of these projects, don't forget to tag me over on Instagram so I can see it and like it. And thank you again to Marlo for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanna check them out and get a huge discount, make sure to click on the link below I'll have all the details down there. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.